A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Glory to Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader and the listeners, upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, that is why when we could bear it no longer, we decided to remain alone in Athens and sent Timothy, our brother and co-worker, for God in the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you in your faith so that no one be disturbed in these afflictions for you yourselves know that we are destined for this. For even when we were among you, we used to warn you in advance that we would undergo affliction just as has happened. As you know, for this reason, when I could bear it no longer, I sent to learn about your faith for fear that somehow the tempter had put you to the test and our toil might come to nothing. But just now, Timothy has returned to us from you, bringing us the good news of your faith and love, and that you always think kindly of us and long to see us as we long to see you. Because of this, we have been reassured about you, brothers, in our every distress and affliction through your faith. For we now live if you stand firm in the, in the Lord. What thanksgiving then, can we render to God for you, for all the joy we feel on your account before our God? Night and day we pray beyond measure to see you in person and to remedy the deficiencies of your faith. Now may God himself, our Father and our Lord, direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all. Just as we have for you so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness and before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. Praise be to God always. From the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle John writes, When it was evening, his disciples went down to the sea, embarked in a boat, and went across the sea to Capernaum. It had already grown dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea was stirred up because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near to the boat, and they began to be afraid. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. They wanted to take him into the boat, but the boat immediately arrived at the shore to which they were heading. This is the truth. Peace be with you. In our first reading in Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, we read how he had sent Timothy to them to hear from Timothy how their faith was. Paul considered himself a father to the Thessalonians. He considered himself as someone responsible for their faith. And so he did everything he could in preaching, in letter, in sending teachers and representatives so that he could make sure that they would grow in faith and in love and in knowledge of God. We are called to be responsible for the faith of those that God has put in our care. Whether we are parents seeking to care for our children, grandparents seeking to care for our grandchildren, aunts and uncles, godparents, mentors, or priests, we are meant to desire, desire and love those in our care so much that we want them to be overcome with and full of the love of God, 
we want them to know the gospel. Now, in our gospel for today, we hear another of Jesus' nature miracles. A miracle where he is not healing someone, but rather he is walking on water and teleporting boats. The disciples are afraid because they do not recognize the way that they are seeing the Lord. But when they are able to recognize the Lord in a way that they had not seen him before, what does he say to them? Do not be afraid. And they are built up and encouraged. When we are in quarantine, when we get older, when our state in life or status in life moves or changes, we have to see how are we seeing God in this place. Because even if we are in the midst of the sea on a boat by ourselves, still God is there, still God is present. And so we must be able to identify how God is making himself present to us, how God is showing himself to us, how God is showing his love for us. My brothers and sisters, at this time, we are able to learn more about God because we are able to learn how God is present to us when we are at our homes Learn how God is present to us when we cannot go visiting as much as we would like. One thing that we are trying today and hopefully in the future is to try to do the liturgy outside so that if people want to be present, they can sit in their cars or bring chairs and sit outside. So we're going to be trying this for the next few days. Possibly we'll be trying this for Sunday as well, or possibly next Sunday, where people who are in in um, who are able who are, can prudently come will be able to drive up to the church to be able to sit in the parking lot or sit in the grass to see us. Probably we'll be out in the field, but to um, be able to uh, be present to God in the liturgy, with the church, practicing all of these different social uh, distancing and safety practices. God bless all of you.